When you're navigating conflict at work, it can be hard to think about much else, both day and night. However, there are tips to help you get out of that mental anguish and into a more logical space to help you prepare for that conflict resolution conversation. In this week's episode of The Happy Leader, I'll share some of those tips with you. I also have a worksheet to help you map out what your approach is gonna be. And finally, I'll share with you a situation when I was in the workspace, when I took the wrong approach and I snapped at my boss and how it got me into big trouble. Welcome to The Happy Leader. I'm Amy Sanchez, executive coach to some of the most innovative leaders and teams in Silicon Valley. I'll share stories and tips to help you navigate the most common leadership challenges so you can amplify what matters most, happiness. When I was a senior marketing leader working for a rapidly growing healthcare company, I had a boss at the time that I did not get along with. She had a tendency to gossip, complain, and hone in on the gaps and completely miss highlighting the wins. And looking back, there were things that I did that really compromised our working relationship as well. At the time, I was traveling frequently. I was working really, really long hours. It didn't feel like there was a separation between work and home life. And I was doing a job that three people had done at my previous big company, Johnson & Johnson. So I was wearing a lot of hats and juggling a lot of different priorities, oftentimes having to to move from strategic work to tactical work. All of that felt draining in itself. But on top of that, to have a boss that I didn't feel supported me and that I clashed with was incredibly frustrating, to say the least. If you are in the midst of this, you are in the right place listening to this episode today because resolving work conflict in your favor is a skill that will serve you throughout your career. Now, in order to highlight what to do, first, I'm going to share with you the mistake that I made in that critical juncture of that relationship. In the midst of my struggle with my boss, I made a dismal mistake. One late Friday afternoon, when I was toggling between exhaustion, desperation, and anger, I snapped back at my boss in an email. The minute the unsaid frustration between us turned into a physical record, the tides turned for me. She started on a warpath to get me fired. In the silent frustration that I had been suffering through suddenly turned into an urgent need for us to secure allies. Looking back, the swirl that our conflict created was not only tolling emotionally both for her and me, it also took our time and energy away from core business activities that we really needed to attend to because there was a lot going on and instead distracted us to invest in a political campaign. I was still early in my career and I didn't have the insight, support, or training to help me navigate such a sticky situation And looking back, I know that I handled it poorly and unintentionally lashing out at my boss in that email pushed her into a corner that I could have anticipated if I set some time aside to really think about my response instead of acting on my feeling in the moment. Given her capabilities and awareness at the time, Anyone could have predicted that that email to my boss would not snap her into seeing the error of her ways and change her behavior towards me into a more positive direction, which was the outcome that I was hoping for. Instead, that email made on a late Friday night when I was at my emotional low made my situation worse. Today's episode is all about managing conflict. If you are operating in the corporate world, it is inevitable that you will face conflict probably multiple times throughout your career. Preparing yourself to navigate that conflict will help you show up better when things come to a head. We can't control everything, and acknowledging what we do and don't control can be really freeing. But after this episode, you will be able to control how you prepare for an important conversation to address a conflict. I'm going to give you some tips and tools to help you arm yourself with the right words and the right approach to set you up for success when you embark on a conversation that addresses conflict. 
And that small investment of your time could possibly change the trajectory of your entire career. Now, first off, if you're joining me in the midst of conflict, let me just acknowledge that it feels really crappy in the moment. And in fact, it can dominate not only your work thoughts, but your personal thoughts. So you tuning in to try and find a way to troubleshoot this means that you're taking a step in the right direction. I also want to normalize just how common this occurrence is. The average time employees spend weekly resolving disagreements in the U.S., is 2.8 hours per week. Now, worldwide, that number drops slightly to 2.4. And I have some ideas why it's higher in the US, but I will not digress on this podcast. Number two, managers spend about six hours per week, roughly 15% of their time solving work conflict. If you're a manager, I know you know this. Having to deal with the everyday people situations is an unanticipated time suck that uh, is important to undertake as a manager. Number three, 85% of employees report having some level of conflict at work. My guess is the remaining 15% are in denial. And number four, in the US, $359 billion are paid each year and they end up focusing on conflict instead of positive productivity. In short, conflict at work can be a huge money suck for companies. Now, if you are listening to this as a stakeholder in a business that you lead, you may be realizing how costly conflict is in your organization. Imagine instead if your managers were spending that 15% of their time on business building activities. There is a way to decrease that number, and I'll share that with you today. And I've done this work with a lot of companies to date. So Gosh, if I shared all the stories that I had on helping companies navigate conflict, we would never get through this podcast in the time that allows you to get back to work. So I'm going to hone in on, on one example for you. If you are listening to this as an employee currently navigating conflict, you likely will not be surprised to hear that conflict is also frequently associated with stress, anxiety, depression, and a feeling of being less motivated. I will be the first to raise my hand and say that when I was in conflict with my manager, it impacted my sleep. It left me feeling like I had a dark cloud over my head whenever I prepared to speak with her during our conversations and after as well. I constantly ruminated on the conversations that we had, and it just left me feeling so helpless. It took up a lot of space in my head, and it had a negative impact on not only the way I showed up at work, but my personal life as well. It really was swallowing my life. The old saying is true. People don't leave companies. People leave bosses. If you are currently navigating a work conflict and that is dominating your thoughts, let me first sympathize with just how difficult that can be. And also, normalize your experience. Here's the deal. Conflict is rampant in the workplace. When done right, though, conflict is a really good thing in an organization because conflict allows us to challenge the status quo and create change. This leads to innovation and positive achievements. This helps our society continue to evolve. The answer is not to squash conflict in the workplace, ignore it, or otherwise expect it to go away. That's unrealistic when you're working with humans and also counterproductive in a competitive capitalistic society where innovation is valued. The answer to how to successfully navigate conflict in the workplace is this resounding reality. We must better equip ourselves and our employees to manage conflict. In fact, I believe this should be a course taught in high school, right there along with how to manage your finances. As a coach, I am constantly partnering with my leaders to help them navigate conflict. This is this is happening all around us. Silicon Valley is no exception. Recently, I supported a CEO as he helped mediate a conflict between two of his most senior leaders. The stakes of that conversation were incredibly high. A negative outcome as he was mediating this disagreement between his two most senior direct reports meant that both his leaders could quit in one day, and both of them had threatened to do that. Luckily, we spent time preparing him for that conversation, and he was able to drive the outcome he wanted. The key was that he spent a little bit of time in preparation, really thinking about what he wanted to say, 
and how he wanted to handle any potential outcomes. And that really set him up for success. So this is the key I want to drive home in today's episode. Preparation for those high stakes meetings where you're going to be addressing conflict with the hope of improving the future is key. And I'm going to share with you just how to prepare for those conversations. So 30 minutes of your time preparing can set you up for success. So whether you're tuning in to find a way to personally navigate a sticky situation at work, or if you're thinking about a way to train your organization on the best way to resolve conflict to reduce wasted productivity, here are steps to resolve conflict in your favor. I'm going to walk you through each step, but to help you, I've also put these tips in a worksheet that you can access. Uh, I've called this Managing Conflict, a Preparation Checklist. Just scroll to the notes section of this to download that worksheet to help you prepare for that conflict conversation that you're going to have. The most important component in managing conflict is to try to do it in such a way where your negative emotions about the person or situation don't control the way that you show up. That's when we see regrettable behavior. That's when we see career limiting decisions and actions take place. So your key, just high level, is to ensure that your emotions are not the lead in this conversation. Preparation always helps with that because you move from the emotional place where you've likely been sitting for quite some time to the logical space. Taking a little bit of time prior to an important scheduled conversation about conflict will help you collect your thoughts and strategize about the best way to approach the person or situation to improve the final outcome. The tips that I've put together for you are going to come from a combination of three places. One, best conflict resolution strategies. Number two, top negotiation tips, because it is a little bit of a negotiation when you go into this conversation. And number three, how to give constructive feedback. You're going to learn all three from this. This is broken down into two parts, what to do to prepare for this conversation and number two, what to do during the conversation. Let's start with that preparation before the conversation. These are some questions that you'll want to brainstorm. First off, think about what the ideal outcome of that conversation is. What is it that you want to achieve? Walking out of that conversation, what would be best case scenario? This kind of allows you to create that vision and then you can start working backward from that. This also helps to thwart against any emotional outbursts because as you know, having an emotional outburst rarely leads to a positive outcome in a conversation. Usually it leads to triggering the other person. So What is the ideal outcome of this conversation? Next, you'll want to think about what are your interests in this upcoming conversation and how do they rank in order of importance? Really think through that because you don't want to get stuck on a point that's number 10 in order of importance. You really want to try to hone in on one, two, and three in this conversation so you don't get sidetracked. Number three, put yourself in your counterpart's shoes as anguishing as that may be. And think about what their interests are in this upcoming conversation. How might they rank them in order of importance? Through this exercise, compare what you've put down versus what your counterpart might put down and see if you can find any sort of overlap. This allows you to find areas that you can both agree on. And if you can get to a place where you both agree in the conversation, the tendency that you're going to get to a positive outcome is much, much higher. So create those two lists and see if there's any overlap. Also, this list will help you think about what do you or might you agree on? Again, if you can get to a place in this conversation where you're both speaking the same language and and finding areas where you overlap and agree, it's going to be much easier to address the areas where you don't agree. Here's the other thing to think through. What is your best alternative to a negotiated agreement? In negotiations, we call this the BATNA. In other words, if your ideal outcome is not achieved, what's your preferred alternative outcome? Also, what's the minimum outcome that you'd be willing to accept from this conversation? Also known as your walkaway point. It's important to think about this in advance so you don't have to gauge this in the moment when things when the conversation really starts to get going. Next, 
what would I like to highlight during the conversation? And what's my specific ask? Focus on the action here, not on the person, and map it out using the SBI model. So you know how I told you I was going to give you a model for constructive feedback? This is it. Apply this in your conversation when, as you resolve conflict. And here's what that goes like. The S in the SBI is the situation. What's the situation that you observed that upset you? Now, this allows you to get away from name calling or getting into insulting that person. You're specifically just stepping back and describing the situation that you observed. The B is what's the behavior? What's the behavior that you observed that you witnessed that um, was problematic? Number three, what was the impact that you felt or the impact of their behavior on the team, the work, or the organization? Really bring this to life for them. When you spoke out in that meeting and said that the work that my team delivered was subpar, the impact was it really demotivated me and my team. When you deliver that SBI, Situation Behavior Impact, Next, you want to give them an opportunity to share what their original intent was. So this is where you ask them for their input and really listen to their response. So now that you've sort of stated your interpretation of what happened, give them a chance to explain themselves. That allows them to feel like their voice is being heard instead of feeling attacked. After you hear what they have to say, what their original intent was, be ready to share your specific request. What is it that you need in the future to help this relationship get back on track? Be very specific and be fair and realistic in your request. The other thing to think through as you prepare for this conversation is what are your options if this conversation does not go well? This gives you a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel if everything falls south and you know that this isn't the end all be all this conversation. It takes a little bit of pressure off of the conversation. Finally, what skills and strengths do you have that will help you navigate this conversation? I want you to really hone in on what you bring to the table. That's going to help you shine in this conversation. That's going to help put you in the right mind space. So those are all the things that you'll want to do to prepare prior to this important conversation. The last thing that I'll share with you in preparation is prepare your opening statement or your anchor. How you choose to start this conversation will set the tone for the rest of the conversation. When determining the right words to start with, anchor to an outcome that you both would find attractive. For example, what I'd like to achieve during this conversation is to find a way that we can both work together in a way that decreases stress instead of adds to it. Then ask your counterpart to weigh in with a question like, how does that outcome sound to you? If you can both agree on the intent of the conversation to start, the conversation will start on a positive note. And if things go sideways, you can always come back to your anchor or the intent that you both agreed to. If things go south, that could sound like, how do we resolve this in such a way that lets us decrease stress when working together or whatever it is that you've both agreed to? So that's your upfront prep work. And again, you can download this worksheet for free in my, from the notes section. Here's the second thing that's going to set you up for success. These are the things that you'll want to think about during the conversation. Number one, remain calm. If your emotions escalate in this conversation, you will likely increase the intensity of the problem. Think about a fire. When you add gas to it, it explodes. You want to avoid that outcome in any way that you can. Try to be calm and objective during the conversation to to increase your chances of achieving a positive outcome. Also, listen actively. Give other people in the conversation a chance to speak and demonstrate that you hear them. This will increase the likelihood that they will meet you halfway. This is quid pro quo. If they listen to you, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel heard. You're going to be more likely to negotiate. Same goes for them. Separate the person from the problem. And this can be so hard to do because after we've seen behavior repeat itself, we start to assign labels to people. That person is a jerk. That person doesn't listen. That person is insert your adjective. Try to avoid that trap. Even if you've been stuck in in it for a while, that kind of thinking is not going to help you find a resolution. Instead, try to view the problem as a specific behavior or a set of circumstances rather than attributing a negative feelings to the whole person. 
try to work together. Avoid trying to place blame. That's not going to get you anywhere. And instead, take ownership of the problems that you can really own. You being the bigger person and taking ownership of the things that you have influenced in this situation will help the other person see that you're not blaming everything on them. And they'll be more likely to take ownership for their responsibilities. You might have to agree to disagree. Being right is not what is important here. So don't get up on needing to agree on everything or trying to convince that person to agree with everything that you say. That is not the goal of this conversation for you to be right. Instead, remember your intent to resolve conflict, usher in peace, make it easier to work together, improve productivity, whatever your end goal is. Stay focused on that. Sometimes that's going to mean letting go of your ego and focusing on the best future outcome for all. If you implement those tips, that is going to put you way ahead of the game and prepared for this conversation that can, in the past, might have been really, really difficult. This is going to put you more in control. It's going to help you think logically and clearly instead of being debunked by your emotions during this conversation. And it's going to increase the probability that you're going to lead to a positive resolution between you and the person that you're choosing to address conflict with. Spending just 30 minutes preparing for that important conversation using the questions that I shared with you can mean the difference between a successful conversation where you reach a resolution that works for all, an emotional ending that won't leave you in agony, versus having this conversation put fuel on the fire and increase that wedge between you and the person that you're in conflict with. At the very least, the time that you've spent listening to this episode will start to plant the right seeds to set you up for success in that conversation. If you want help navigating your current work situation, or if you want to train your team or workforce on the best ways to navigate challenging conversations and conflict in the workplace, just reach out to me. You can email me at amy at swim-against.com, and I'll provide more targeted support to help you and your efforts. In the meantime, I wish you all the best. And remember, sometimes the worst situations can result in a change that we didn't even know we needed. Thanks for listening to The Happy Leader. If you would like more information about me, Amy Sanchez, and our executive coaching and team leadership services at Swim Against the Current, visit swim-against.com. And if you liked this podcast, help others who could use the support find it by giving us a rating. Until next time, life is short, stay happy.